You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. Yep. Yep. From Los Angeles, California, and Maria Menounos, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Spotlight On is a long-form interview series featuring actors and TV personalities. And now, from the world's number one TV after-show platform, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Hello, After Buzzers. Oh, we have Taylor Swift now. Oh, yeah. Shall we group a little bit before yeah, we start? You might know me as Jillian Leff. Uh, I am here to host another special edition of AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Tonight, we have a great actor in studio. Uh, the last film that we saw him in, he was half naked. Uh, <laughs> but this time around, he could be returning to TV screens. Half naked again? And screaming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Karna. Hello, thank you so much. Oh, thanks for coming in. Uh, and thank you for the Taylor Swift suggestion. Oh, it was, it was the only song that I could suggest. That was all him, guys. Yes. It was, that was all Kim. That was all him. Taylor, if you're watching this, that was for you. <laughs> She's a busy one. girl today. She came out with a new song, you know. She that's very, I gotta get a hold of that. I know. We'll listen was, to it after the show. That's good. Thank I you. promise. Before you leave, you'll be able to hear it. That would be nice. <laughs> uh, so first I want to talk about Premature. Yes. Um, funny story about how I actually got this interview. Uh, <laughs> We actually tweeted back and forth, guys. We did some uh, tweets. We did some tweets. Um, some boner jokes flew around. Some hashtags with some boner jokes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dan Beers, the writer and director of the movie, uh, chimed in. He sort of got behind me. Yeah, I would say he was a facilitator. He was. The thing. So thank yeah. you, sir. I hope you watch this. It was just so hard to um, sift through all of the adoring fans. And then this <laughs> one tweet came out. She said, hey, come do this show. And I said, but I'm scared. And I'm, I'm scared no longer. Oh. It's wonderful. I'm so happy that you're not scared. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about Premature. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, shame on you, because you should. <laughs> uh, IMDb describes it as a high school senior has to relive losing his virginity over and over again mm -hmm. until he gets it right. So you play Rob. Yes. Who was one of my favorite characters in the film. Oh, thank you. Um, for me, sweet. it was sort of John Hughes meets American Pie, but the raunchy part. <laughs> uh, so is That's that awesome. what Dan and you had talked about That before? was, yeah. I remember uh, when I got the part, he said, all right, this is how I want the film to be. I want it to be like a John Hughes movie for us, um, for, the, for the new generation, I guess. Is there a name for our generation, by the way? It's not Generation no. X or like the Boomerangs or anything. No, the Boomerangs. <laughs> I, I kind of like that. The we're, the, we're the Boomerangs. <laughs> Welcome to 2014. Yeah, we got to think of a name for uh, our generation. No, but uh, they, they said, he's like, I want it to be a John Hughes film. And I was like, oh, that, that would be really sweet. And so he gave me kind of a watch list mm -hmm. uh, for the summer before we shot it. And, you know, it was the classics. I got to see Ferris Bueller's Day Off again, yes, which is yes. just, I mean, you can't beat that movie. Uh, 16 Candles, mm -hmm. The Breakfast Club, you know, uh, what was oh, Everything good. Weird Science. Yeah. Weird Science was delicious. Um, just some, some phenomenal movies. And, and it was awesome. I'm so happy that that came across i think i think the the big difference was between you know i think it had a lot more heart than i guess the really raunchy movies um which i appreciated as a woman <laughs> i mean i watched it with my boyfriend i was i was telling him before and you know for me he enjoyed the male humor and so did <laughs> i don't sweet. get me wrong that's very sweet but there was a lot of heart in it for the girls yeah you know my mom probably appreciated that too um but, and i remember that was a definite thing we were like we want to um you know, we want to be crazy and nuts and so all sorts of fluids in the movie, but so um, many fluids. it's like crazy. Um, wait, what did, so wait, this is, I mean, this movie is all about ejaculation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you just brought up your mom. How'd she deal with that? <laughs> I mean, really? like uh, My mom <laughs> is the sweetest lady that um, has ever been created. And she she's so supportive of the fact that I love cinema and I love... I love moving pictures. I love acting. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's been nice to be able to kind of be like, listen, mom, it's going to be okay. And she came in and she actually was loving it. My dad was laughing harder than I've ever seen him laugh before. Uh, no awkward talks after, which was really nice. But uh, yeah, she was, she was a big fan. 
of I that. can't. I can't. Yeah. So this was your first like big paid gig, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which um, was really sweet. So was it surreal at times on set? It was really, really cool. Um, just, just really cool. I, I'm remembering now how amazing because it was a whole month of shooting, and I was lucky enough to be there every day. Uh, which, which at first was really daunting and intimidating, uh, but you know, in the end, it, it became very natural to be able to go and 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 shoot every scene. And um, I had actually had a little bit of experience doing a movie with a really good friend of mine, Andrew Edison. Mm -hmm. uh, we did this movie that actually made it into the Slam Dance Film Festival. It did? Yeah. Kevin James. Yeah, yeah Kevin Smith. Yeah, oh, Kevin, Kevin Smith, sorry. Right. Yes, yes. <laughs> Kevin James might have watched yeah, it as well. Yeah, you know, well. the King of Queens, yeah. he's King of there Queens too. King of Queens might have been there, there too. too. Um, but that was a crazy movie too, where I think at one point I had sex with a homeless lady. So I think my mom was oh. kind of, <laughs> she was kind of predisposed to see this <laughs> crazy right. side of me. Um, so being able to do that movie uh, was was a really great primer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so it wasn't, too crazy but it definitely was the coolest experience and i met amazing people well i mean i guess i have to add that to my netflix queue now oh yeah it is i think it is, is it on, on netflix? netflix yeah it is on instant yes. watch um it is an improv film and uh so basically we andrew and and the the other guy who wrote it luke they mm -hmm. kind of sat in a room for just months and outlined the whole thing kind of like uh it's always sunny mm -hmm. and uh and we would just shoot around houston texas we we're all from houston and we just shot about three boys and how was that to improv things. everything though oh it was uh it was actually really really fun it mm -hmm. was such a cool way to do it because we would um you know we'd go into a scene and we'd be like all right this is what we want in the story to happen this is mm -hmm. what we want to end up happening let's just go for it and so there'd be takes that i don't know if this means we were inefficient or not but there'd be <laughs> takes that would like last 40 minutes long because right. we would just be messing around and Doing a lot of penis jokes, probably. <laughs> which Seems to be a theme in your it career. Seemed, which is crazy. <laughs> which is which is crazy. It's a lot of dicks. I'm not so many dicks. <laughs> Normally, I'm not. I'm pretty. Uh, I'm pretty dickless. Yeah. You know. I mean, you did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, which was which was such a blast to do the the improv and uh, in the end, it, the editing process. I was told took like you know it took a long time to right. sift through like terabytes of footage. That was a good time. That was a lot of fun. Yikes. Yeah. Look at you bringing the nerd in it, bringing up terabytes. Yeah. Uh, I'm bringing up terabytes. <laughs> I'm bringing Swift. up footage. I'm bringing up T-Swift. <laughs> it's real today. It's everything. It's everything. <laughs> uh, so you had to go back into high school for this film. Yes. Um, yeah. So was it weird going back? Um, <laughs> was it better the second time around? It, it was, you know, it was not as weird as one would think just because I shot that in between my freshman and sophomore year of college. Yeah. And so I am, I'm a young, I'm a young man. You're a young uh, buck. I'm a, I think it would be, it would be my senior year of, senior year of college right now. Okay. Um, but it, it was definitely a lot of fun to remember kind of how it was. It was also fun to go back because I remember thinking, um, in high school, I was like a theater nerd, mm -hmm. and so I, I used to hang out with all the theater kids, and I don't want to say that we were awesome, but we were pretty awesome, and we kind of had the run of the school. People actually liked us like a lot for being mm -hmm. in theater, and so I was excited to go back and be like, what, what would have happened if I had never done theater my entire life, and I had just hung out with like two friends the entire time, which was a mm -hmm. lot of fun. It was really cool to do. Destined for Georgetown. Yes, destined for Georgetown University. Man, it, it was a... That poor kid. Rob had such a hard life because he, he all the pressure to to do so many things in that uh, movie. <laughs> I want to ask you about shooting. Obviously, the the days are repeated over yes. and over again. Yeah. Um. So was it when you would go on set? Was it like, okay, this is going to be the first day? Did they reuse a lot of the footage yeah. that you shot? You know, there was a lot of um what they call block shooting, mm -hmm. where uh, we would you know would be like we have three separate days in like one classroom mm -hmm. you know it kind of goes through three different versions of it and we would shoot all three of those versions but we wouldn't just shoot it uh like one version then the next we would shoot like all three versions for one shot facing me and then all three versions for another shot facing okay. so there's a lot of switching around there'd be a lot of like if i was disheveled one version i would they would like have to like clean mess up my hair yeah. and then clean me up again and then it was um it was a lot of fun it was really cool to be, have to like kind of get into the mindset of uh, all these different 
crazy <laughs> days yeah. that he had to do. So I'm going to get a little deep here. Let's do it. But we're still going to talk about dicks. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I know this is really everything right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so every time your character ejaculates, a new day starts. That's this, sort of this is true. how it happens. Mm -hmm. um, so you basically have the opportunity to relive days mm -hmm. and you control it. Yes. With your hand. With my hand, which uh, uh, that's, a, that's a bit of a revelation in the film. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, so can you think of a com couple of instances in your actual life where you would want to redo a day? Redo a day. Do I have to do it by using my hand? No, no, no. Oh, okay, we can I can leave just the We can leave the dick out okay, of it. Okay, okay. Yeah, like you can just think. It could be a Groundhog's Day situation. Uh, are there you wake any up. times that I would love to redo my day? You know, there are a couple of times when uh, just little things, it's like, man, I should not have gotten so pissed off on the highway and been like this guy is so mean i should have just gone on with my day there'd be things like that or like oh that meal was so good i would love to do it again to redo it oh man like there are restaurants if i'm going to a really good restaurant mm -hmm. it is sad to me when the food is all gone so yeah i would relive that probably <laughs> So food and road rage. Food, food and road rage basically are the things that I most regret. Good to know. Good yeah. to know. Uh, so you and your co-star, Craig, yes. uh, had this amazing chemistry that I caught on to right away. Oh, thank you for saying I that. I thought it was awesome. Oh, so man. did you guys know each other before you sort of were on set? Were there no. any times where you got acclimated before? Uh, you know, we, we met each other about a week before. We all went to Atlanta where we shot mm -hmm. um, to meet each other. And Craig and I... Craig and I were fast friends, you know. Um, he um, <laughs> is the funniest, coolest guy, and he's very Welsh. And um, I get this feeling that the entire month that we spent together, he was like, I mean, I was very, like, excited and pumped to be there and very American, mm -hmm. and I think that he was kind of like... He's like, all right, he might, Yeah, he's like, all right, let's, let's chill out, John. You're being a little skeezy but you know we uh he introduced me to the gym we actually got a membership we did that that was like what? the first time i ever went to the gym which was awesome and hilarious craig's a uh, super into rap so he kind of okay. introduced me to a lot of eminem oh. it was really yeah you wouldn't know it but mm. craig roberts very into that all right yeah. i dig that he's a brilliant dude <laughs> Uh, you also got to work with Alan, who is huge. Oh, yeah. Uh, so did he offer up any sage advice for you as, as a young actor? Man, there was so much that I, I remember the minute I met him, I was like, every time I'm on set, I just I, I had to just get every little bit of what he did and tried to soak it up because he honestly was so brilliant. And, it, and it's crazy. The A guy like Alan, you watch his work and it's like he's he's so... He's so varied and nuanced that you don't even realize how much it actually goes into to doing it. And so, right. like, you know, we would do the scene where he is just, like, sobbing, you know. Mm -hmm. We would have to uh, – he, he plays, like, a, um, a an admissions counselor who basically interviews me for – uh, Georgetown University, but he, he very troubled. Yeah, very troubled man. I like tell him that uh, I want to go because my parents met in Georgetown, and he loses it. He's a little bit sad. His wife had recently passed, and so mm -hmm. and it, it's crazy that that is one of the funniest parts of the movie because he he it's just the way he plays it. Well, the way he plays it is so brilliant because yeah. he just he like he has real tears it's crazy to see he really is like he truly feels this emotion but he's always trying to hold it back and i i can't even tell you i've never laughed harder than on that day that was oh unbelievable gosh. uh so final question for premature oh yeah um since this was your first like big feature yeah uh lessons that you've learned from it oh man um i think the biggest thing that i found out is that as an actor you're always auditioning you you're like you go into the room for like two seconds <laughs> like most film auditions will last like a minute right. you know all the pre-reads and everything and so when you finally do do it you get on set you realize that you're there the whole day and if you're lucky you're there for like 30 days in a row mm -hmm. and so movies become such a big energy management thing you know and like you never take a nap after lunch if it's like you've got like 10 minutes and you're exhausted don't do it because then the rest of the day is shot you know and so I learned a lot of uh, of energy management. I learned a lot of being able to kind of relax on set. And um, after a while, it was so cool to be able to just, um, I don't know, just, just like play around with everyone. And like the lines weren't as set in stone. And we, we all had a lot of fun. And it's a lot of fun. It was awesome. really cool. Well, yeah. it definitely shows. Yeah, I thoroughly so enjoyed it. Thank and you. For all of you who haven't seen it, you should probably go on iTunes and rent it because that's what I did. <laughs> or better yet, buy it on iTunes. Just to see Craig Roberts because that oh, man, gosh. brilliant, brilliant yeah. man. 
everyone was great. <laughs> it's true. Everyone, everyone was, great. was great. Indeed. Uh, so I want to transition to Scream. Uh, yeah. MTV's reboot of Scream as a series. It is happening. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Were you a fan of the franchise before? Well, you know what's so funny is this is this is going to make me sound so ridiculous, but when the first movie came out, I was probably, the first movie came out like, what, 95, 96, something yeah, like Nev that? Yeah, Campbell was young. Yeah, and, and I was like five. Yeah. Like six years old. And I so I remember like, I remember seeing... The movie, and I remember being a young kid, a young boy, you right. know, and, and seeing uh, little trailers of the movie and just being scared out of my wits. So it took me a really long time to catch it. And uh, and I think I saw the first one when I was uh, getting into high school, and then I hadn't seen any of them mm-hmm. until I got uh, cast. So I'm a very new fan of okay. the movies, and it is, like, so great. They're so good and funny, but also, like, brilliant and just... I don't know. I love the movies. I think uh, they're amazing. The first time that I saw Scream was probably last year around this time at oh, the really? cemetery. No way. In at Hollywood. Hollywood. Forever? That is mm-hmm. awesome. So oh, that man. was a crazy experience in itself because you're watching this movie in a cemetery. You're watching, and I'm sure there are people who are obsessed. Oh, there were people dressed up. They were wearing it was, the mask. It was crazy. Oh, my yeah. Gosh. It was very creepy when we were walking out in the pitch black. Uh, yeah. I actually <laughs> just recently saw a movie there, and I saw Casablanca, which okay. was awesome, and I was like, man. All of the stars of Casablanca are like... Are just here. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're with us right now. And it was crazy. It was amazing, but also like, I feel you. trippy. I feel you. Just ya. trippy. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us about your character? I mean, they released sort of a description online, but is there anything that you can tell us? Yeah, yeah. I play a, I play a guy by the name of Noah, and uh, he is... He is very. He's a very smart guy. I love. I love the way he's written. He's one of the one of the smartest dudes in the show because he's so aware of the minute something happens, he knows exactly uh, kind of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Not so much how with Randy in in the first scream. He's very like. Um, he's a very kind of nerdy dude, and mm-hmm. he knows he knows all the movies and he knows all the rules. Noah is more of a guy who who can honestly grab on to anything, which right. is very cool and and a lot of fun to play around with. And so he, he kind of sees everyone as um, almost like walking experiments, just watch, watching them mess around with each other. And he, he's best friends with uh, a girl, Audrey, who's mm-hmm. kind of going through some troubles. And they're more like outcasts in, in the school, but Noah's not the type of guy to care, which is a lot of fun to see and, okay. and do. Yeah. Uh, so you obviously had the read through already. Yes, we did the table read. You guys start filming. We start filming tomorrow. tomorrow. It is oh. real. Yeah. So thank you for coming in before you have your oh, busy, no, your busy week. It was, it was so nice. Uh, so how was the read through? How was meeting everyone? And... Oh, it was so cool. Everyone is very, very cool and so varied. Mm-hmm. And the, I mean, the the casting was brilliant. The, I mean, every single person brings their own energy. And, and that's what's so fun about the show. And I think that will be so fun to watch is everyone's energies clash and and hit each other in really cool ways and so that makes it uh a lot of fun to watch and i think that's what the show's kind of gonna gear towards hopefully is the way that these people deal with all these crazy circumstances while at the same time it's a lot like the first scream and the reason the scream movies are so great is it's a lot like a whodunit you know it's Mm -hmm. like and and that's so fun to see and i don't know it'll be cool what was the casting process like the casting process was um, was really really crazy and out of nowhere, uh, at least for me. I um, I had done a couple of auditions just just around, and one of them was Scream, and I went in and did kind of a pre read for this character, and uh, I didn't hear anything back, and I was it for like a month, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, and by that that point you kind of move on, right? And uh, and then I I got a call. They were like, oh, by the way, they want to test you for the show which was so exciting and I, I was like it was out what? of nowhere and I was like oh okay yeah let's do this man I'm so pumped and it was during the summer and during the summer it's very slow too and mm-hmm. so I was just so glad to have the opportunity to even go in a second time mm-hmm. you know and um and then I got the call like a week later and it was it was really fun and it's been really cool because I was cast a little bit earlier on so I got to read with some of the other choices for oh, nice. opposite roles which was so fun to do and All right. yeah that was really cool so um, I know that you really can't talk about it too much. Right, can't can't give too much away. Um, but so so Jamie Travis, he does yes. faking it, and that yes. was a huge success on MTV. That's good. Uh, That's so awesome. So I'm hoping that it carries over. Yeah, brilliant dude, brilliant yeah. dude. I love. Um, he directed for a Good Time Call, mm-hmm. which is such a sweet and wonderful, awesome movie that. Um, and I, I don't know, I love the way, and the way that it's so fast-paced and fun and everyone plays off of each other. 
is gonna be really cool to see on this show because it is very fast paced and cool and I don't know it's a very it's it's gonna be very fun and cool and and spooky and there's a lot of craziness that happens just mm-hmm. in the pilot that is exciting and and terrifying and awesome so do you know the process after you guys are done and they've you're done filming the pilot they've edited it what what do they do from there we're done filming the pilot they've edited it we'll probably go in for some adr which Mm -hmm. is like dubbing and kind of getting um all of that stuff maybe some some screaming maybe some screaming i don't know (laughs) it depends on uh what happens on how it plays out yeah right and uh and after that i think they've got the they'll send it off to the network and the Mm -hmm. network has some time to kind of look it over and you know deliberate and then eventually if uh if they decide to go for a pickup order then i would assume then we'd just shoot it would be it would be sweet yeah. I know that there are so many fans that are excited about this. Yeah, which is so awesome and, and definitely so cool. And, and it's definitely something you can tell with the whole production of it. Everyone mm-hmm. is very excited about it and, and not wanting to make any mistakes and, and loving it very much. Everyone loves the the whole source material and not just the source material, but the genre and just how exciting it is. And, you know, it's it's a very self-reflexive show. It's very cool in that scream scream is aware that there are these these shows these days that are out that more than ever are all about horror and yeah. like american horror story and you know mm-hmm. and uh and hannibal and all these amazing shows and so it i think it, it'll be very cool to be able to add it to the pantheon of all of these really exciting shows to watch you know uh so obviously wes wes craven is involved correct yes yeah i have not personally met him but i saw a tweet <laughs> he tweeted he tweeted he tweeted out yeah uh- Hey, he tweeted no out. Big deal. A, he said a uh, screamcast got announced, and I think he's excited. Yeah, he's uh, he's on as an executive producer, amazing. which is very cool and and so amazing. Yeah. Well, it's it's obviously going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be tops. I think I think the the biggest deal is you know fans really want this because although there have been multiple screen movies, mm-hmm. they still want more. Yeah. And it would be so awesome to sort of bring the TV show to the MTV generation. Yeah, it really is. It, it It's such a cool way to kind of check in with everybody every week, you know? And um, it's almost like it, it, just so fun to see, like like I Pretty Little Liars is huge following mm-hmm. because it's like, I personally haven't watched it, but I remember hanging out with a lot of people who were obsessed because it's like every week, it, it's always a new crazy thing. Murder, that, mystery, murder, love. Murder, mystery, love. It happens all the time. And I'm not saying that Scream is going to be Pretty Little Liars, but it, it's very exciting that... I hope it's bloodier. Oh, oh, I hope so too. It's going to be very exciting. <laughs> I, I guess if you did this like a week later, I would tell you how much blood got Darn everywhere. It. But um, yeah, hopefully there's going to be some uh, some crazy stuff. And the script allows for it, which is really cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I want to transition since uh, Let's do it. I-, I wish you... Good luck this week. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I'll be updating my Twitter, tweeting <laughs> yeah. at you. Oh, I'll be tweeting at everyone. Great. Post Hello. some photos. Oh, I'll yeah. share them. Some selfies. Awesome. That'd be cool. <laughs> uh, so I want to move on to some questions about you, since this show is sort of all about the actor's journey. Yeah, sure. Uh, so how would your parents describe you as a kid? How would my parents describe me? Um, I was very excited about performing uh at a young age i remember i think the first time that i was ever really excited about getting in front of everyone i was like three years old Mm -hmm. and um obsessed with the ghostbusters theme song i don't know why we always had it on our like halloween tape you know right and um (laughs) and so every halloween that would come on and i would be like guys come into the living room and (laughs) and i had like a dance to it and so i'd be like dancing around and my mom would make me do it again. She'd be like, "Look, everybody, come on, you gotta, everybody, Look at watch this. this." And so um, I think they were very excited about that early on. And um, as a kid, I remember all my teachers were really pumped. They were like, "You know, this kid needs to get up on stage." I had a lot of energy. I was going out of right. there, and um, yeah. So I think they might have described me as uh, rambunctious, a rambunctious kid. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Did they always see you doing? something in performance yeah i mean i always told them which was very cool sorry mike um <laughs> gosh I you're apologize. so gosh you're so polite i apologize must be that texan in you i don't <laughs> yeah. know uh, they, um, southern gentleman i i remember telling my parents so young that i was like guys i'm i'm gonna become an actor mm-hmm. and my dad was like don't you want to be an eagle scout and i was like maybe but no and <laughs> no. then i <laughs> maybe play one yeah yeah i will, I will play one <laughs> one day um, yeah, they, I think they were kind of set up for it and they've been so supportive of that because I know that it's not always like that and it's not always the, I don't know, the easiest career mm-hmm. 
to go on, you know, and yeah. so uh, they, they were, they've been so nice and when I told them, I was like, I want to go to college for it. And they were like, oh, okay, you, you don't want to be a doctor. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm doing this. And so I majored in uh, musical theater at the University of Oklahoma, mm-hmm. which was awesome. Yeah. And then you left. And then I left because... Dun, dun, dun. Right. And which, not because the school was in any way um, an experience that was lacking because it, honestly, I, I miss it so much. Mm-hmm. I, I mean... Uh. So you'd still be in school right now? Yeah, I would be a senior right now, which is crazy. I think today is actually the first <laughs> day of school, and I'm seeing all the tweets from my old friends. I'm like, this is our last first day of school, and everyone's really pumped. And I'm and like, I'm going to be on an MTV show, bye. <laughs> which is so, <laughs> so, so fun. It's very sweet, very sweet. Um, do you feel like you're missing out on a, an experience? You know, I got a lot of the experience my first two years. I went to the football games and um, I had this thing. I Ever since I was in middle school, I always hung out with kids who were a lot older than me. Mm-hmm. Um, they were always like two or three years older than me. And so in high school, people would graduate so much sooner than me. And I'd be like, God, I just got to get to college. And then in college, I was friends with a lot of kids older. And I was like, God, I got to get, get out of here. Yeah, what am yeah. I doing? Um, and so... It all kind of worked out perfectly because I was going to school and having a great time Mm -hmm. and learning so much. And um, about like a quarter of the way through my freshman year, that's when Bindle Stiffs actually got into this uh, festival. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the Slam Dance Festival uh, in in January and it just changed my life because I got to see all of these people who were so, so passionate about about movies and, and just about just showing them to people. And it's like, it doesn't even matter if if everyone sees it or not because it's just the fact that we made it and and that just made me so excited and i remember um i really started actively searching for like representation like mm-hmm. on the sly you know i didn't right. really tell people but i was like <laughs> i really want to do movies i think and it's like no you want to sing and dance and i was like maybe, maybe. all of it i'll do everything um <laughs> but uh yeah and so so after i caught the bug of uh of all the movies and tv that's mm-hmm. i knew that i wanted to move to los angeles and and try it out. And I've, I've been very fortunate. It's been very cool. Yeah, it's yeah. been a quick... Yeah, so fun, yeah. too. Yeah, it, I, honestly, very... Uh, people, so many amazing people have helped me out. I mean, being able to... I found a, I found a manager my freshman year of college, and mm-hmm. that's that's kind of how I was able to audition for all of this stuff um, and, and get the role of Premature. Right which was really cool. Um, and I remember, I remember because I was so into musical theater and, um, you know, just very, I had a lot of energy. And musical theater is all about like yeah. expanding and, and projecting and feeling and it's amazing. Uh, but when I first started auditioning for these movies, I like set up a camera and had people read lines and it was just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, my manager, Leanne, she was like, all right, John, I don't know about <laughs> some of this stuff. Tone it down. Yeah, like you need to keep taking classes. <laughs> Um, and I just kept, I would, I would get a really good friend of mine, uh, Chris Larberg and he would, he would help me out. I don't know if Chris will ever watch this, but thank you very much, my friend. Hey, Chris. Hey. <laughs> um, and we would like at one in the morning after all the classes, we would be shooting these auditions for all of these movies and TV and, um. What a good friend. Yeah. He was so sweet to help me out. It was awesome. We ended up living together. It was brilliant. Um, Amazing. and so that's how I ended up getting, uh, premature. And then after that, I was like, man, I, this is amazing. And I, I got to shoot it the summer between my freshman and sophomore year. And I was like, what a, I'm so excited about college, but after doing awesome. premature, I, I want to go into LA and, and figure it out. And so after right. my sophomore year, I was like, guys, I think I'm going to take a hiatus. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I really believe, I told my parents, I was like, look, if nothing happens in a year, I'll go back to school and it'll be perfect. Right. But uh, thankfully, I mean, this year has been so fun and, yeah. and awesome. And I was able to, uh, to, to get some parts and it was really cool. Amazing. Yeah. So... You love acting, but Very if much. acting wasn't on the table, what do you think that you would be? If acting wasn't on the table, I've always told people this, but I would love to be a pilot. I think being a pilot would be the coolest thing in the world. I don't know why. Like a fighter pilot. Like an airline, an airline pilot. Like a JetBlue pilot. <laughs> like a JetBlue pilot. Okay, so you're the guy that asks for the wings it's like, yeah. when you get on the plane. Yeah, I think it's so cool. And also to be able to be like, all right, guys, we're going to take you to Tahiti. And, you know... <laughs> Hey, everybody, uh, sit back and relax. And let's play the in-flight movie. And I just think that would be awesome. Well, you have the voice down. Thank you very much. So I hope you get to play a pilot one day. Oh, man, after watching Catch Me If You Can, I was like, this guy, he knows what pilots are. They are so cool. It's so cool. He was slick. He was that a Leo. Slick dude. That Leo. Leo, if you're watching this. I... <laughs> wow, you a Taylor Swift shout-out, a Leo <laughs> shout-out? 
We know. You're giving me a lot of credit <laughs> thinking that these people watch the show. <laughs> oh, so um, what was the first thing that you ever booked? Like even the littlest thing. The first thing I ever booked was, um, well, I guess, I guess, I mean, depending on what you mean by booking, I guess the first thing, the first movie I ever did was, was Bindle Stiffs, but mm-hmm. the first thing that ever was like, okay, we're going to pay you to to do this, which was so cool, was Premature, uh, which was awesome. And then um, oh. we always kind of joke, it was such an awesome experience and um, such an amazing way to learn. But I was like, I, I mean, I also need to kind of figure things out mm-hmm. in like in like how to really manage all of it. And, and so when I moved to LA, I then got cast as like a guest star in this ABC show called uh, Neighbors. Neighbors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which was such a good time. It was amazing because I, it was the first time I had ever worked on TV, mm-hmm. and it was like um, unbelievably different because everything is so much faster. Right. You know, you're on the Disney lot, and you're like, "What? Oh my god, everyone's this is so cool." Really There's cool. Nikki. And, yeah, and, <laughs> and it's also crazy to see because I think by the time I was shooting it, it was a little later in in their season. I don't know if they got picked up for a last season, but they um, everyone was so comfortable, and mm-hmm. so it was so funny to like go in as a guest star and kind of like shake the energy up a little bit. Right. So that was really fun. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And then look where you are now. Yeah, yeah. very cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so I guess I want to ask you some random questions Hit just me. because these are things that I know the viewers are going to want to know and I kind of <laughs> want to know. Let's do it. Uh, what's your TV guilty pleasure right now? My guilty pleasure, and this used to be guilty for me and it is not at all okay. anymore, is um, my girlfriend last year got me really into Big Brother. And so now <laughs> this year, it's like I'm telling my girlfriend Andy I'm like Andy we are watching Big Brother. So wait, do you pay for the subscription? I don't to do, watch them? I'm not that intense yet cuz okay. there's there is the 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 cam. The cam yeah. yeah, which you have to pay for, which It's like 30 bucks. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I I checked it out and I was like I was surprised that you had to pay and I was like maybe a little later on in my life I right. might uh, I might go for it. But the the show itself man is so funny and great and just like hilarious uh, i haven't actually watched last night's show there was like one okay. last night and so i don't know don't spoil it for me uh, if you watch it i i did not read about it today okay good. so so don't worry <laughs> um, but man uh last week was wonderful it was just such a good time how do you feel about um ariana grande's brother frankie oh yes yeah that was a big reveal last week they uh i mean he he, he, he announced it. it before that he was gonna go under his dad's name right on the sly right yeah and so, i and i think he did mention he's like eventually i am gonna reveal it before because right. he had a whole strategy he about has to clean up his game when it happens but oh man it was it was pretty hilarious to he like took people <laughs> frankie Frankie Grande, whoever you are, brilliant dude, because he like took everyone into the living room and all the girls. He like mm-hmm. went from girls yeah. to guys. He took all the girls in and he said, All right, so what's my last name? And everyone was like, Grande. And they were like, What's what's my sister's name? And they were like, Ari? And he was like, I call her Ari, but her name's Ariana. <laughs> and everyone, was like, everyone was like, What? And I Oh God, it's so funny. Such a good show, man. So good. <laughs> I'm just I'm just basking in it. Well, you need to watch the Big Brother After Show on AfterBuzz. Right? It's yeah, great. I, I really they should. have guests in all the time. That's brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. You just weigh if anyone, in. If anyone needs to, <laughs> let me come. Yeah, in if you need an, if you need an expert. Because oh man, I'll be hilarious. sure to put you in contact. Thank you so much. Um, what is one movie that you never get sick of? Oh man, this movie I have seen like 25 times. Um, because I'm such a huge Edgar Wright fan. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World mm-hmm. is so good. It is so good. And and it feels very, I, I don't know why, but everyone else I was talking to, they they weren't as excited about it as I was. But Edgar Wright is such an amazing director. Yeah. Uh, Edgar, if you're watching this, no. <laughs> uh, thank you very Look much. At this. For I need movie. to get them in touch. <laughs> yeah, like, come on. Wow, man. these shout outs. Um, yeah, but that movie I will watch. And that was that was another really good friend of mine who introduced that to me. And, and we would just sit and watch it. Just like if it was like an off day, we'd be like, all right, pop in Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> We'd watch it. It's an easy movie. It is. I, yeah. I love it. I mean, it's just it's so it, it's so good because it's so fast paced and the cuts are so fast and amazing that you don't realize how crazy it was to make something that intricate and and brilliant. And the writing is hilarious and and all the stuff they did in, in post was brilliant and hilarious. And the soundtrack is amazing. I just love the yeah. fact that it reminded me so much of a video game. And, right. Yeah. And I, I was a big video gamer back in when I was a kid too. Mm-hmm. So it was like it was very nice to. Go back to it. Go back to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the last thing you Googled? 
the last thing I Googled. Man, I Google some random things. Uh oh. Well, was, we talked about boners we today. We talked about boners. So, today. really, I don't know what else could be more well, awkward than that. You know what I Googled recently? Uh, actually, the very last thing, ever since Scream happened, mm-hmm. I've been really boning up on my horror movies mm-hmm. because I actually, that was one thing that I really didn't watch. I really didn't watch horror films because I get really freaked out about it. Like the Paranormal Activity movies. I didn't sleep. Mm. It was nuts. And now, thankfully, like, I've watched so many horror films in the past three or four weeks that, I mean, it, it's been a little desensitized, but I just watched today, um, Wes Craven did uh, The People Under the Stairs in okay. 1991, and uh, I think it was a little bit before Scream, and it is the craziest movie, and so I googled that, and I was like, what? How, tell me about the stuff and there really isn't that much information uh on the production of it which i think is so funny because it was it was crazy i Such gotta, a crazy I gotta movie. check it out yeah it is during intense. the day though i don't like watching scary movies yeah at night. it is it is some <laughs> of the, the well, <laughs> i don't want to ruin it but they're they're basically they go into this house and there are these two um two like crazy people mm-hmm. right they're and their husband and wife they call each other mommy and daddy i've never seen more committed performances <laughs> by two actors it is unbelievable Yikes. and so i, I was really Yikes. excited to watch that uh so you are a texas boy yes um but you're in la now yeah so what do you miss most about home oh man whataburger whataburger is i have heard wonderful things it's so good it's so good. And, you know, in and out is wonderful. in and out is great. We're having a great time. in and out is great. But Whataburger has everything. And in the mornings, they have the honey butter chicken biscuit, which... I've heard. Have you the heard legend, of the... the legend. Oh, man. Yes, I've heard. Let me tell you. In high school, we, <laughs> we would... They would start serving breakfast at 11 uh, a.m., p.m.? A.m., p.m. They would start serving breakfast at 11 at night. <laughs> yes. So, yes. PM is uh, night. Yes. I'm going squirrely. Mm-hmm. And um, and so we would all hang out. And then once 11 hit, we'd be like, all right, we're all going. And we would all take the car and we would get caravan in. And we'd just get like so many honey butter chicken biscuits, which is basically a biscuit, like a really delicious biscuit um, with honey butter sauce slathered in it mm-hmm. and a uh, slab of fried chicken <laughs> all together. And it is the best thing that you've ever had. I've eaten so many of them in my so life. many but it's been so long because i've been here but one day sad what a burger if you're watching this <laughs> <laughs> this joke needs to stop i'm so wow. sorry wow. Yeah, but... <laughs> All right. well, i'll be here to tweet at them maybe i'll be able yeah. to air mail you. Well, i don't know dunkin donuts is is on its way here since santa monica yeah, that's I an east coast thing that. so who knows yeah. it could travel oh man let's get what a burger have over biscuits will travel have biscuits will travel you please <laughs> please uh share something that people don't know about you Oh, something that people don't know about me. Fun fact, if you will. Fun fact. Well, I guess there's so much that people don't know about me. I'm a bit, I'm a bit young uh, to the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a fun fact about me is that uh, I have done uh, three yoga classes in my life, uh, and they've all happened this week. And I gotta say, guys, I get it. I get what you guys are into about uh about the yoga stuff, so I'm thinking of doing that. Okay, yeah. well, well, just for your information, my friend did yoga next to Chris Pratt the other day. Are you see Chris Pratt does yoga? So like you're oh, cool now. He's so cool, man. <laughs> he's he is so, so cool. cool. <laughs> and and that movie is so good. I loved it. Ah, oh, Chris, if you're watching. Hey, Chris, if you're watching. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Uh, uh, what is one great. thing that you can't live without? One thing I cannot live without. Um, man it's it's kind of gotten to be um <laughs> it's kind of gotten to be uh hamburgers which is awesome um i'm a huge burger dude and okay. so like if burgers were gone from the face of the world it would be it would be a pretty hard thing to uh to hang out okay. with yeah i really love the burger i'm, I'm pretty into the counter it's a big oh, kind of la yes, thing it yeah is. Make i your was, own. introduced me uh to me here and Man, it's delicious. Okay. It's so good. So you're a musical theater kid. So yes. what was your first ever role? My first ever role was in uh, seventh grade. <laughs> tell and, me more. And uh, <laughs> tell me more. Um, like, does he have a car, though? It's such a good thing to ask <laughs> in Greece. Um, no, my first ever role was in a wonderful musical. Uh, Meredith Wilson composed The Music Man. Yes, and, she did. And uh, I was in, uh, I was Marcellus Washburn which is uh, the best friend to the music man for those who are uninitiated. And um, yeah, I, uh, the music man, and uh, it was such a good time. 
Amazing. I love it. I have, I, maybe that's something that I should say that people don't know is I, I really do have like a passion for musicals. Mm -hmm. Like I really love listening to them. I haven't done it as much as I, I used to, but when I was in school, it was like all the time, all the time with the musicals. It was great. Amazing. Well, yeah. I know what we're going to talk about when the show's over. Oh yeah. Are you into those? Uh, that's very cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so besides uh, Scream, which you have right now, yeah. uh, is there anything in the, in the pipelines? In the pipelines. Um, I'm so excited to be able to say that there is something in the pipelines <laughs> uh, because most of the time there's, there's not. Uh, there, I got to, I got this awesome experience, um, really cool opportunity to go shoot a uh, little tiny part in this movie called Sugar Mountain, mm -hmm. which uh, directed by this remarkable guy, Richard Gray, brilliant Australian man, and um, I, the the movie is pretty cool. It's I don't it should I think the edit's done, so it, you know hopefully it'll be okay. be coming around soon. But um, it's this independent movie about these two brothers who uh, they're really strapped for cash, and so they decide that they need to. Um, uh, fake like a hoax in the mountains they're in Alaska I feel okay. like I should mention that they're in like Alaska okay. and right. it's beautiful we got to shoot in Alaska and it was so gorgeous and wow. so it's two brothers and uh, the older brother's uh, girlfriend who's also like a family friend it's like the three of them decide to do this hoax and uh, things go wrong one of them like pretends to get lost in the mountains but mm -hmm. you know th something goes wrong and I'm uh, I play a young man who owns the general store with his sister and uh he is uh intellectually challenged okay actually and so and he's like the man who got lost is uh his idol and so he he's really heartbroken and okay. and beat up about the whole thing the town is all right. uh, very intense and so it was such a cool role to be able to do because it was it was so different from all the dick stuff <laughs> and so <laughs> i got to uh yeah. i got to go and 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 talk to a lot of um, amazing kids mm -hmm. um at institutions and um and centers for for intellectual disabilities and mm -hmm. it, it was it was so cool to be able to kind of try and tell that part of the story right yeah it was very cool well we'll be looking out for that yeah hopefully it's good i mean the movie That's itself exciting. is gonna be brilliant jason momoa has got a part in it from game do of you thrones. watch game of thrones i've just started man oh man, i'm John. so bad at tv but like the good stuff when i hear that it's good it'll mm -hmm. take me years to That's do it okay yeah like You'll i get just to finished enjoy breaking jason. bad you'll yeah. enjoy it that's it's good. great because i've He's seen awesome. i've seen two episodes and calls rogo automatically is the coolest dude i've ever seen and i, I watched it. it after i met him too and that guy is like oh, it's amazing He's a house yeah he is. Uh, anyway i want to thank you for coming in tonight thank you so much again um again if you guys have not seen premature go out and scoop that up watch <laughs> it it's wonderful um and then also hopefully we'll be able to see john on mtv very very soon that fingers crossed cool. Uh, and yeah, where can the fans find you on social media? Uh, check me out on Twitter. Um, I'm pretty bad at it, but it's at Johnny underscore K. And uh, I've got an Instagram as well. And I don't remember what my screen name is, well, but I'm I, sure you'll be able to find me. I will tweet that out. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Jillian Leff on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I also host The Fosters, which airs right after this, seven, uh, tonight. So be sure to tune into that. And I'm also going to have Bo Murkoff from Awkward in the studio tomorrow at 4.30. Uh, so be sure to tune in. Uh, thank you so much again. Thank you. And this was awesome. Yeah, this was very cool. Awesome. Have a good night, guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs> <laughs>